Welcome everyone, welcome to A Day in the Life. Um, my name is Greg Lers, I'm a librarian here at Royal Holloway and uh, New Bedford College and I'm joined by my colleague. I'm uh, Laura McCulloch, I'm the college curator um, and both of us have at our fingertips um, some amazing images from the arts collection and the archives um, and we know that they're incredibly popular um, and we really wanted to share that with you. We're going to co-present, so we'll be switching between speakers and hopefully you'll enjoy that. I think in terms of setting the scene, then what we're going to kind of do then is set this up as the scenario that you're a number of prospective students who are considering going to attend either Bedford College or Royal Holloway to get yourself a degree or some further or well, higher education. The time period that we're going to be looking at is kind of around the late 1800s, early 1900s. And there's a couple of reasons for that that we'll go into in a moment. But really what I want to do is kind of set the context, the time, some of the kind of political and social situations that we're going to be kind of influencing or kind of being part of joining a women's higher education institute. So in this time period, about 120, 130 years ago, women's rights are a big topic of discussion and so by extension women's education as well. In this time period the women's suffrage movement has been going around for about 25 years, 30 years in an official capacity with the National Society of Women's Suffrage being formed in 1872 and obviously in 1897 the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies was formed as well. And this is important because at this time period that we're looking at there's a number of notable suffragists, suffragists sorry, who do attend Bedford College and Royal Holloway, such as Louisa Garrett Anderson, Flora Murray, Mary, Mary Reed MacArthur, and Emily Wilding Davison as well. One of the things to remember as well, that women's higher education is still very much in its infancy. Bedford College, as many of you may well know already, was the first institute offering women a higher education, a university level education, and Royal Holloway was the fourth to do so. But despite the kind of pioneering nature of these colleges, we've got to remember that quality education, especially higher education, is still very much the provision of professional families, like a, the, the upper middle class. This is gradually changing, and both colleges do offer bursaries to students, but that's only ones who've been able to pass the university's matriculation. So for you as prospective students looking at these colleges, you're most likely to have come from a household where you weren't required to go out and work and earn a living to help support the household. From a young age, your parents would have been supportive of your education and you would have had the luxury of time and probably finances as well to support you through this, either then to be able to pay directly for your enrolment at the colleges or that you can then pass the university's matriculation to gain entry to them as well. So if you are a prospective student joining us today, you most likely come from means. You may well have had a private tutor or governess as well going through uh, your studies with you. And also you probably come from a family involved with maybe clergy, doctors, lawyers, merchants and bankers. So with all this in mind, and if we've hopefully set the scene, what we're going to do now is kind of step back in time, 120, 30 years. And first of all, we're going to start having a look at Bedford College and all the things that you would have experienced if you were a student there at the time. Now, 1849 Bedford College was founded by Elizabeth Jessa Reed and we've got this nice fantastic photo over here and I'm actually going to pause at this moment to kind of just set a little bit of context in this because one of the things that we've actually been working on the last few months or experimenting with is taking some of the black and white photos within our archives collection and trying to colorize them to try and add some color to them to see if we can bring them to life a bit more and especially with this talk hopefully give you a sense of what life was really like at these times. So having said that, with this photo here of Elizabeth Jessa Reed, we can't say 100% that the colours are a true likeness, but hopefully what we've done here does give you a bit of a sense of what this pioneering woman did look like. I'd just like to say it's really been um, Greg who has been pioneering this and me giving my tuppence worth about the colours but um, yeah he's done a great job and I have never seen these photos like this um, so this is partly where this idea 
of being a prospective student comes from because it, it does somehow allow you to feel a bit differently about the black and white images. So I we'll hope you enjoy them as we go through. So as I said, the time period that we're kind of looking at is the late 1800s to early 1900s. And the reason for this is kind of based on what we do have digitized and available within the archives and art collections. Especially with Bedford College, we don't have a huge amount of digitized resources before the move to York Place. So in 1874, I think it was. So a lot of where we focus then is this kind of little time period where I suppose we're taking a snapshot day but drawing on information in this kind of like 15 to 20 year period. With Royal Holloway, we're lucky that since its founding in 1886, we do have a lot of visual resources around that. But again, that fits nicely into this kind of time period that we are looking at. So in terms of Bedford College, we did start out with some very nice humble beginnings at Bedford Square. But with the growth of the college, the increase in student numbers and the want to provide actual living accommodation for students as well, we did then move to York Place in 1874. With York Place, this is based in uh, Baker Street, just off Marlebone. Sherlock Holmes territory. But of course, there's nothing elementary about this. It is higher education at its finest. Um, Laura didn't know I'd been going to do that joke. I don't think I thought of it oh, over lunch brilliant. just, so apologies to everyone for that terrible one. So, as I was saying, so we, the building that we're going to be looking at and introducing to as prospective students is our fantastic uh, Campwell building here at York Place. Now, this is two buildings that have been combined together. The two, well, the ground floor and the first floor, they're set aside for our teaching, and the top two floors are then accommodation for our residential students. So there is limited numbers of spaces for residential students and a lot of our students are actually what we'd call our day students who live in the surrounding area or private accommodation nearby and within commuting distance who join us during the day but don't actually stay in residence with us overnight. So welcome to Bedford College and here we are in the entrance hall of Bedford College. Um, it's lovely and light and bright. As you can see, we're very interested in both the arts and the sciences. So there's a number of artworks around the college. And I'd just like to point out, safety is really important to us. And if you just look at the right hand side um, of this, um, both actually both pictures, you can see our firefighting equipment. Uh, so it's state of the art firefighting equipment. Um, I'd like to point out um, a piece of art that we're really proud of at Bedford College, which is the Della Robbia Angel, which is in the top left hand corner. Um, and that is quite a newly produced piece of contemporary art produced by the Della Robbia Pottery. Um, they're set up in Liverpool um, and they are part of the arts and crafts movement. I think many of you will be aware of the arts and crafts movement. Uh, your parents may live in arts and craft houses or may buy artworks from that movement. Um, and it does show that we do have quite liberal leanings here at Bedford College um, and support those workers. So as a person, oh, and sorry. now Greg, oh, oh, we're going to lead into Greg um, and he's going to show you around some of the teaching facilities. As a prospective student, I'm sure what you're most excited to see is our actual teaching facilities that we do have available. Now, as a prospective student for Bedford College, you've got the choice of either going down like a science focus or a humanities focus, depending on what you're most interested in. Now, depending on what route you go down, there's a number of different modules that you're able to take. And it's most likely that you'll be studying with us for, if you want to achieve a full degree, a three to four year period of study. But we do have a number of people that join us for perhaps a term at a time or only a year to pass particular modules or qualifications. Now your module choices, they include ancient history, French, German, Latin, geography, reading as well, and also vocal music, classics, languages, English, literature, just to name a few more, arithmetic, chemistry, botany, biological science, and nursing as well. Now in terms of our teaching facilities, we very recently built some brand new science laboratories, classrooms. You could say we've spared no expense. And as you can see here with the ones we've got here, they're plumbed in, so we've got running water, there's heating with radiators, there's a sprinkler system built into the 
roof for safety as well and gas piping as well for Bunsen burners under your experiment. So you can see really this is state of the art cutting edge technology that we've got here available for your studies. This here is one of our chemistry laboratories and we're also very proud of our botany classroom as well which you can see here and a number of our students working very hard away at it. Now you've got to remember at this time obviously sciences and, and women studying the sciences perhaps is frowned upon by certain um, parts of society and obviously we're challenging these and we want people to make the most of it. We do hear good things about uh, Marie Curie maybe winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in the near future but we've got to remember that we're doing something where we're changing other people's minds and attitudes here as well. And just to kind of step out with the history a little bit, it's not until 1945 that the Royal Society admits its first female members. And not to brag, but it was actually Kathleen Lonsdale, a graduate of Bedford College, who was jointly introduced along with Marjorie Stevenson into the Royal Society as the first women. Now, we have got a couple of brand new courses as well that we're very proud of, such as Public Health and Hygiene and also our teacher training course as well. So really, if you are looking at Bedford College now, you're joining us in a period of expansion, increasing student numbers, and it really is an exciting time to really be studying with us here in central London. I'd just like to point out, we don't just have the Botany Laboratory, but we also have a Botany Museum and a herbarium. Uh, so we have all the up-to-date facilities for studying botany. Um, if I jump back, a little bit into the future very sadly Bedford's Botany Museum and most of the herbarium got destroyed in a bomb in 1941 during the Second World War but what is left is now still part of the Royal Holloway Herbarium uh, which does still exist um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later if we've got time um, but I just wanted to point out that it wasn't enough for the students to be studying it um, it was felt they needed extra resources in that area and as men would have been, they created those facilities for them. As well, one of the exciting things about Bedford College is you'll be studying alongside people from a wide range of different backgrounds and also people who attend from all around the British Empire as well. You may have heard of one of our notable uh, alumni and civil rights activist, Sarah Parker Remond, as well, who we're very proud of being, who we believe was our first black uh, student at Bedford College. Now, if you are of the arts discipline and um, a budding artist and you're really hoping to make it as a professional artist, you couldn't do better than choose Bedford College. We are one of the first institutions to allow women to take life drawing classes. You won't find that on offer in other institutions like the Royal Academy schools or even at the Slave, which has recently been set up. Um, actually, students are going to have to wait till the late 1890s to be able to do that there. Um, so what we do do is allow our students to really enjoy art and really have professional training, which will then hopefully allow some of them to become professional artists. And we do have a number of alumni who did go on to do that. You can also study literature and the other arts, but we're particularly proud of the art studio. Indeed we are. We've got our dining hall as well, which you can see here set out with uh, its table settings in place. From the actual digital records, we're not sure at the moment whether this was for residential students or for day students as well. But one of the things that we can say about it was that people would have to have a certain level of dress and presentation if they were attending and were dining with us here at the college. Now, one of us as well, you can actually see this colorized and hopefully give you an idea of what it was like, but also probably the most important building, not that I'm, well, room in the building, not that I'm biased as a librarian, was probably the library. And I will want to say as we're going on this tour here of Bedford College, just to be silent, because the library is a place for individual silent study. If you are a student here, what we do remind you is to follow the library rules, or you may find your name is recorded in the senior student's notebook, which you certainly don't want, as that will be passed along to the senior members of staff and your poor behaviour reported. Now, we have had in the past part-time librarians who take care of the library for us, but we have been looking to employ full-time librarians in the future, but many of them do kind of split their time between teaching, research and other activities as well. Most recently, our librarian, Miss Anna Lamberg, 
Uh, she's left the post due to her marriage, so we do wish her luck in the future and we'll be looking to fill the vacancy soon. But kind of stepping out back to the current time and the moment, what we are kind of proud of is that we believe there's a number of books that would have been in the original collection that still exist within the collection today. We've also got some of the original furniture, which has just turned up, actually. Um, it's been quite hard to identify which is Bedford furniture and which is Royal Holloway. Um, but doing the work for this talk actually has allowed me to identify some of those. So that's quite exciting. So now I'd like to welcome you to the common room um, because socialising is important as well as studying. And we're incredibly proud of the portrait above the fireplace. That is our newest principal, Miss Hell Blatt. Um, our previous principal has quite recently left. Uh, she was Miss Penrose to take up the principalship of Royal Holloway College. Um, and this particular portrait is, has been created by a female artist, Ida Morley. Um, and we're quite excited about that because, as you know, we really like to support female artists. Um, around the room, there's lots of other inspirational art um, prints. And in particular, I'd just like to draw your attention to Ben Jones' Hope, uh, which, when we're incredibly frustrated with our studying, does give us that little seed of hope to keep going. Now, you do have the choice, obviously, as a student at Bedford College, where you are going to be a residential student or a day student. If you choose to be a residential student, you'll get to know our managers of the residence, Miss Bostock, Miss Martineau and Miss Smith, very well. And they're always going to be on hand to support you whilst you're living at the college. We do encourage our residential students to make use of their rooms as um, social spaces as well. And we can see here from this student room, so please be respectful of their private area, that there are a number of seats and seats to take an afternoon tea or have some socialising. Please don't touch their hairbrush at the front, that is a personal item. But one of the things as well is if you are staying with us in central London campus and you do want to go out and explore London, we do have a number of staff on hand to act as chaperones so you can go around not unaccompanied. One of the things as well that we're very keen on here is that you take part in some of our sports clubs and societies. We're very proud of our debating society. We've got a sketching club the Musical Society, a Photography Society and a Boating Club as well. The college runs a publication called The Balance, which we started a number of years ago, which focuses on the issues around women's suffrage. And we're very proud to say that we've had people contribute it, such as Lady Betty Balfour, the suffragist, not the actress, and also Millicent Fawcett as well. So you'll, if you do want to contribute and be part of that, you'll be joining a very esteemed number of contributors with that. Now we do have our very successful hockey team as well and we also do have a cricket team that we run. And one of the things we do want to say, we're a pioneering institution, we're letting women in, uh, be involved in these sports very much ahead of the time and just we bear in mind the Women's Cricket Association wasn't actually formed until 1926 so we're doing this much, much more before um, it was official for women to be able to do these sports or take part in these sports in a professional capacity. We do also have a swimming team and we very recently won a swim meet between several women's education institutes and groups. So we're very proud of that. And also we do have our boating society for people interested in rowing, which was set up by the former principal, Miss Penrose, who was very familiar with rowing from her time at Oxford. So as well as all the sports that you can take part in, we have other societies. Greg has mentioned a few, but one of the ones we're most proud of is the drama societies. In particular, the one that probably gives us the highest accolades is the Greek Play Society. Um, and we put on Greek plays completely in Greek and they are attended by the public as well. And we've been reviewed in the press. In fact, one that we're particularly proud of is the review from Emily Wilding Davison, who wrote about us, that the performances given by the Council and Committee of the Greek Play Committee have won laurels for both themselves and for women in general. And we know that it's quite unusual for us to be doing Greek plays. This is most definitely something that would have been the domain of men. Um, women haven't been taught 
at classical languages until recently with pioneering institutions like Bedford. And so this really does mark us out. Um, and we go to any lengths to make the play as authentic as we can. And here you can see some of our members wearing beards uh, to play the parts of the men. We're not put off by having to play either gender. We even draft in some of our younger siblings when we need to. And that is where we bring this tour of Bedford College to an end. We really hope that you have enjoyed coming to look at us and that you'll consider us. We're a central London college. So if you want to combine your time um, studying with being in the metropolis, then we do hope that you choose us. And now we're going to take you to a much more rural college, uh, Royal Holloway College. So. Royal Holloway then, as we've said, was founded in 1886 by Thomas and Jane Holloway. Unfortunately, Thomas didn't live to see the college come to completion and its opening by Queen Victoria. Obviously, Royal in Royal Holloway comes from it being opened by Queen Victoria and a bit dissimilar to uh, Bedford College. Uh, it was a residential college. There weren't day students um, at this point. The first principal, um, Miss Matilda Ellen Bishop, has now left us, and we now have Miss Emily Penrose in post, formerly of Bedford College, which you may have already heard of. Now, when you arrive, although we're rural, we have very good transport links. Thomas Holloway made sure of that. This is Egham Station, and it's been painted by our curator. Um, he looks after the paintings on campus, which I'll show you later. But in fact, he lives just across the road um, where you can see the horse's head. He has a, a house just there. Um, he doesn't just look after the paintings. Um, he also offers art and painting as extracurricular activities to any students who want to do those. Thomas Holloway bought the Mountley estate to create the college. Um, and so we are surrounded by this beautiful rural setting. Um, and this is a typical scene when you're taking your physical exercise in an afternoon um, around the grounds. This is a typical scene that you might see. So you're kind of far away from the hustle and bustle. Um, so you don't get distracted by the city during your studies. Um, but as you'll see, there's plenty of time for socializing and fun. This is another scene by our curator, Charles William Carey. He loves painting um, Royal Holloway from all its different viewpoints because it really is a beautiful campus. Um, and as I say, you can join him on some of his trips as part of your studies too. And of course, as well as the rural setting, we have these beautiful landscape gardens and you will see later on the kind of fun that we get up to in those gardens uh, with tea parties regularly taking place. But we're very, very lucky to have this setting. Um, and the view looks out over the countryside um, and if I leap into the future, that view, uh, you can actually see Thorpe Park if you're up high enough um, in Royal Holloway. So that's the direction that you're looking at there. Now, obviously, again, you're going to be interested in our state of the art teaching facility, facilities that have been purpose built with this brand new college. If you want to follow in the footsteps of, say, Emily Wilding Davison, you may want to study English. But we also do have the options to do philosophy, modern languages music often if you want to do music you'll need to have either a singing focus or a talent in a particular instrument we teach the classics greek and greek and latin and if you want to do the sciences we've got physics such as the laboratory that we're showing you here we've got chemistry applied mathematics pure mathematics and the ever popular zoology as well now as you can see we've got state-of-the-art teaching facilities and equipment so you can be really at the cutting edge of what research is in these subjects at this time and from this picture here as well you can see that we've got very stimulating uh, learning environments with lots of relevant imagery and resources to support it our founders lecture theatre as well is built that we can see to 180 students in it so which really shows what our ambition and potential for growth is from our initial intake of just over 20 students at the moment now we do just have over I think it's 120 students enrolled at the college. We have both male and female teaching staff here at Royal Holloway and a number of our female teaching staff do live in the Founders Building but all of our male staff 
don't live in Founders, they live in the local area. You may see a number of gentlemen working in the grounds either on maintaining the estate or at the boiler house. Not to worry, there is a tunnel built between the boiler house and Founders building for the workmen to shuttle coal in between. Um, we're not encouraged to uh, be distracted by men um, and really only to socialise with uh, male family members whilst we're at the college. So whilst you're living at uh, Royal Holloway, one of the things that is most fun and that we're encouraged to do is um, to create families. And so in fact, we're all assigned a family and this was introduced by Miss Bishop. She didn't want us to feel um, homesick or um, that we didn't have friends. So one of the things we do every day as a family is we meet here or outside the bungalow uh, where the architect William Crossland lives. He built the college um, and we love going to sit there. There's amazing climbing roses. Um, but we also meet every day in our studies uh, for afternoon tea um, and you will be able to see us here enjoying our tea. This is uh, one of the studies. We all get to decorate the studies as we see fit. We're very lucky at Royal Holloway because not only do we have a bedroom, but we also each are given a study. It's amazing to have a room of one's own at Royal Holloway. Um, we've never had that kind of space before. And here we are with our family in our group with our beautiful decoration. Now, as we can see here, obviously, students who attend the college are very welcome to add personal effects to the room, such as photos, plants. And also, as part of our founding charter, it would be remiss if I didn't remind you that you are responsible for providing your own bed linen, towels and table linen, and you're responsible for its washing as well. We do keep quite a strict timetable here at Royal Holloway. And so we do ask that all students, the curfew is 10 p.m. at night when it's lights out and you will then be confined to your rooms. Now, oh, I'd just like to point out, um, sorry, that some of the personal effects um, are taken from people's travels. Here we have a crocodile. Um, so this is one of the students' rather more unusual decorations. Um, and also, I think you can see some really great examples of the table linen that students bring. Uh, but we absolutely love our square tables that we have our tea on. And um, we even take them outside for outdoors tea parties as well. And actually, there it is colorized, which I think really does kind of make quite a striking image. Now, catering then. So, as you said, at Royal Holloway as a residential college, we've got strike quite a strict timetable that we stick to. Breakfast is at 8.15 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., we take an afternoon tea at 4 p.m. and then you'll be expected in the evening for a formal dress dinner at 7.15 p.m. Now, if you're very lucky, you may get an invite to the head table to sit with the principal where you can engage in conversation about the current topics of the day or your studies that you're going through at the moment. And also as well, a number of our residential staff will join you at the tables as well for further conversation involvement. And as you can see, it's a very formal setting. There is table service from staff and also for the head table, a butler as well. Um, I'd just like to point out that at the head table is Miss Penrose herself uh, with some of our students. And we take it in turns to sit with her. Uh, but if you look to the back, you will also see her predecessor, Miss Bishop. Um, that's a wonderful portrait painted um, by Shannon, one of the top portraitists of our day, um, and also the college banner. Um, we have in the centre of the banner roses, and it was Miss Bishop who chose that as the symbol for Royal Holloway College. And if I jump back into the future, we still have both the banner and that portrait. Uh, we also have quite a lot of the crockery, the original crockery, which was made redundant when the merger happened between Royal Holloway and Bedford. Uh, so we've got a number of pieces of that. We've got some silverware. Um, and I mentioned the, the tea tables earlier. We have an example of that because that really does seem to be pretty central to the students socialising at the college. One of the other things that you may be interested in is that there is a chapel at Royal Holloway as well, even though it never has been consecrated. 
As our founding charter says, domestic life of the college should be that of an orderly Christian household and the principal should lead a simple religious service every morning and no permanent chaplain should be appointed. Our services are run at 8am every morning sharp before breakfast at 8.15. Now also as well we have made arrangements that for anyone whose parents do wish them to practice any service of any religious sect or denomination that is allowed at the college as well. Now one of the things as well that we're most proud of with our chapel is actually our choir which is headed up by the extremely well regarded Dr Emily Damon. They've got their doctorate in music from Oxford and also teaches our music theory module at the college. So if you are particularly musically bent, then you may wish to enrol here at our college and make use of these excellent uh, specialties we have in our staff and facilities. We're also looking to appoint a specialist to help with our soloists and our choir is a regular fixture of many of our calendar events throughout the year. Here is one of the jewels in the crown of Royal Holloway. It's the painting collection that was bought and gifted by Thomas Holloway. He selected the pieces himself. And this is the collection that the curator, Charles William Carey, looks after for us. He also teaches us on it as well. And um, this is a space that you can go and you can socialize in um, and enjoy the art and contemplate it uh, with your friends. But also it is open to the public one day a week as well on a Wednesday and that's a ticketed event so if you want people to come and visit you uh, they can apply for a ticket. Um, you'll see at the back there is a beautiful sculpture of um, the Greek woman Erina and this is quite a recent addition it was given by friends of the artist who sadly passed away. Um, they have been quite strict with how they'd like it displayed and they did cause uh, Charles William Carey a few problems um, when he initially put it in, there was no black backdrop, but they demanded that was added uh, to give Erina her full, um, I guess, setting, a most beautiful setting for her and to make her stand out. And then the other um, facility that we have, so we have both the arts and somewhere to contemplate that, but we also have somewhere to contemplate the natural sciences as well. And this is our museum. Uh, my favourite object is the little bird that you can just see in one of the display cases on the right. Um, and so if you're studying botany, zoology, uh, biology, geology, all of these places, you'll find um, something to come and transfix you and keep your interest as well as your, your books in the museum. And very handily, it is close to the library, so you can take a break from studying. Indeed it is, and again, not that I'm biased, but I do think the library is perhaps one of the most important uh, rooms here at Royal Holloway. Again, it is silent individual study, so I do ask that you do maintain your silence while we are just looking in this room at the moment. We have a full-time librarian in Miss Guinness, who is also actually the vice principal for the college as well, which does perhaps reflect how seriously we do take the curation and development of our library collection. As Laura's just said, we are literally just opposite the museum as well. So we do have a nice corner of Founders Building set aside for these kind of reflections and further study. Now, we do currently have over 8,000 volumes within our collection. And I'm very proud to say we've recently purchased some new shelving as well in order to expand the collection even further. Now, the books that are in here, yes, you can use them at any of the tables and study spaces there but you can also loan them out for your own personal study. But we do ask that you do take very good care of them because you will accrue fines for late returns or if you damage or draw or make any notes in the margins of the book. But as you can see here, it's a very elegant setting, very good for just reflecting and doing your own personal private study. Sports and society is again a very, very big part of life here at Royal Holloway at this time. And there are a wide range of societies, social groups and sports teams that you can get involved in. We ask that all students take time each day to partake in some sort of exercise. But we do ask that if you're going to either walk or cycle down into the town, that you don't do it alone, that you do have somebody with you when doing that. Now, with our timetable, which is quite strict, what we do have is after our lunch, you will then have one hour or perhaps two hours set aside for studying but then after that 
every time period up to our T at 4 p.m. is set aside where you can then be doing some exercise. Uh, amateur dramatics as well is again a very big part of our kind of social calendar and we put on a number of plays throughout the years which make extensive use of the fantastic grounds that we've got here as the setting. This particular photo here shows the cast from our recent performance of Sleeping Beauty but we've also recently done a production of Mice and Men and Great Expectations as well. We're also proud of our swimming facilities as well, which is state-of-the-art swimming pool. The water is fed from a local spring, so students are allowed 20 minutes in the pool at a time, no more than twice a day, and we restrict it to seven swimmers in the pool at any one time. Now, as part of like a supplement or extracurricular activities, we do award badges to our students if they can show a proficiency in breaststroke, side stroke, backstroke, swimming with their legs only or with their arms only and of course they must show a proficiency of being able to dive in head first as well and also to swim one length in no more than 12 strokes. We also run annual swimming races as well with different races such as the fastest over three lengths, the relay race, the obstacle race and our ever popular nightgown and candle race. Bedford College, you may have heard the rumours, recently challenged us to a one-on-one -on -one swimming contest which we had to politely refuse and had absolutely nothing to do with their recent uh, resounding victory at an uh, annual swim meet between different women's institutions and organisations. Of course, safety is first at Royal Holloway and you will probably see that we have our nurse uh, installed at the end. Uh, that's also to make sure that everybody's keeping to the swimming rules, uh, but she is on hand in case anyone needs it. The water from the swimming pool is fed by a natural spring on campus. Um, and as you're only allowed to be in there for 20 minutes, uh, you can guess that it's quite chilly. Now, one of the other sports that we have here at Royal Holloway um, is hockey. And we're one of the first institutions to play women's hockey. Um, I know that Bedford College is already playing it too, but I think we might be the first institution to actually be able to photograph a hockey match in, pro in progress. Um, now, you might be thinking um, that we might be a bit encumbered by our skirts, but in fact, we use them to help us stop the ball. If the ball comes towards us and we want to stop it, we just bend our knees. Um, so we're a bit luckier than men in that respect. We have a few things up our sleeves to help us. One of our other very popular societies or sports groups is our Boating Society as well. Our principal, Miss Penrose, is very familiar with the sport from her time at Oxford. And so perhaps if you do want to get on the good side of the principal or have something uh, that will be of interest to talk about, if you are at the head table at the dining hall, then we do recommend you take up the uh, rowing with our Boating Society. You can see one of our teams here just about to set out on the water to practice. Now, Within our kind of calendared events around here, we have a number of formal um, tea parties as well that we hold within the grounds. Quite often the choir might be a fixture of these or special guests as well. And obviously it's a formal occasion where we do ask you to put on some of your best dress. Join us in the excellent landscaped gardens and enjoy kind of uh, studying at the college. So what we do hope you found then from this tour of Royal Holloway in its lovely rural Surrey setting is that you are encouraged to join us in the next academic year to continue your studies into higher education.